Hey, business owners, adventurers at heart, would you like to be able to transform challenges into opportunities? How might that kind of mindset change your business and the level of success that you're achieving? And listen up, because today we are talking to entrepreneur Kevin Thompson. I'm super stoked for this conversation um, about how to grow business, even when faced with adversity, because like adversity is just a part of the adventure, right? So plug in your earbuds, listen up. This is going to be, uh, don't want to miss this episode. I'm awesome, Angie Ingstrom. And I'm Gita Adkat, and we're so happy to have you on Momentum Makers podcast today, Kevin. So welcome. We're so excited for this show. <laughs> Very excited to be here with you guys. Why, thank you. Now, for those of you who, who don't know Kevin, I'm just going to share a little bit about him before we start. Now, Kevin is a former veteran who successfully established and sold three companies prior to founding his current company, Mountain Dog. As the CEO of his company, Kevin is on a mission to share that the key to success lies in embracing a journey and using a unique stories to inspire and lead. Or as Kevin likes to put it, my path has shown me that momentum is about how we adapt and leverage our experiences. So let's transform challenges into opportunities and drive forward with purpose. I love that message. It's so powerful. So let's go. We're excited for it. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for having me. I, I, I feel honored that you guys would bring me on. Um, I, I, I've been a fan and, and watched your guys' podcast. I, I really enjoy what you guys do. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Thank I appreciate you. you taking the time to be here today. This is, I am super excited. I was reading your bio and uh, just so much resonates for me. I, I so I'm very excited to hear more. And I, I love how you just, in, in, in the notes that you sent us, you just kind of casually throw all these cool things out, you know, helicopter pilot, military, you know, 4-H, growing up in this epic part of Oregon and and then having successfully established and sold three companies. Like, it's just like, <laughs> just kind of throw all that stuff out there. And I just love that. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so brilliant. So, um, you know, it's, you know, I, I tell people embrace the opportunity that's in front of you. Mm. Um, and and that's half of life is is embracing opportunity and and embrace the challenges too. We have a saying in the military, embrace the suck. And it means that when everything's gone wrong and it looks like you're gonna fail, just you know, head down, drive on, embrace, embrace the hard times and and just work hard and you'll be you'll you'll be better for it. I love that. Absolutely mm -hmm. love that. Gold already. I love this. So just give us 10 seconds what your business is, and then we'll dive into your story. Perfect. So um, we are the original 100% uh, wild caught Alaskan salmon treat. We are single ingredient. We are incredibly healthy for dogs. Um, we are born out of Alaska, born out of adversity with uh, with not only the weather, but our, our situation in, in coming to this company. Um, our company is a leader in um, training aids for dogs that are healthy, that um, improve their cognitive health, their um, their joint mobility, um, as well as their sensory um, health. They, we simply make the best product you can give your dog. That's mm. wonderful. I love that. Tell us a so little cool. bit about how you got started in that. That's amazing. So, um, it's another trend that floats around our company. We call this the face plan into success. Um, <laughs> and, I love that uh, face plan into success. Yep. And so we, um, I was a helicopter pilot and an airplane pilot, and I contracted COVID and almost lost my life. Uh, my wife was told that I wasn't going to make it and to make final preparations. And I, um, uh, came out of the, uh, off the ventilator. I was on a ventilator for eight days and I came off the ventilator. I woke up and started pulling it out myself and the nurse stopped me and, um, they called my wife back in and they said, Hey, he's alive. And, um, out of that, we spent another week or so in the hospital and these are the early days of COVID. And they said, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to you. So you go home, sit on your couch and see if you get better. So they sent me home with oxygen I sat on my couch for a couple of days and then I was done sitting on my couch and uh, 
I have a, I have a beautiful, wonderful wife who uh, tolerates my shenanigans. And, um, and so I had, uh, I, I decided to get on my treadmill and much to her, um, encouraging of me not to. Um, and so I, you know, we, we had to make a deal. If I, if I put an oxygen monitor on and when my blood oxygen dropped to a certain level, I had to get off. Well, the first day I only made it like three minutes on the treadmill. The second day, I think I made it four. And so my wife and I would just spend our mornings with me on the treadmill, trying to get better and just dreaming and thinking about what we could be doing and how we could be doing it. And, uh, and I have some friends who are some, who are veterinarians and they, one thing led to another. And we said, Hey, you know what, let's start freeze drying salmon for dogs. Well, there was a process there because you can't just take freeze dried salmon and give it, well, you can, but it's not very appetizing. There's not, there's not form to function with it. Most people don't want to touch it. They think it's gross. Um, so we said, okay, how do we add form to function? And so what we started doing was, is making little fish shapes. I invented a machine, uh, with a friend of mine in his, uh, machine shop and just tinkering around, um, like most farmers do in their barns. Um, we, I was thinking around and figured out uh, there was a problem and we identified the problem and then we solved the problem. And so we invented a machine that would cause the, uh, the salmon to stay in a little fish shape like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what you're seeing here is essentially uh shelf stable raw salmon. So, um, your, the, uh, machines behind me here. Uh, we use these machines to freeze dry the product and create uh, this awesome, nutritious form meat and meeting function product. That's so, um... Uh, so going forward, like any business endeavor, we tested the market. And so we once we figured out how to make these, uh, we sent them to a farmer's market just to see if they would sell. And they sold fast and they, we needed more and more. And this is literally created in the basement of our house. And so we said, well, the basement's not working. My wife was tired of our uh, house smelling like fish. And so <laughs> she said, you got to get out of here. And I said, okay. So we moved to another location um, and temporarily. And then we moved to our final location here um and started and, and that's that's how we started we are now shipping to 24 states and we enjoy um vendor partners such as walmart fred meyer um and we're in talks with albertson's and others um recently we started working with the united states military to uh, work with their working dogs for high value training treats that they can use in the training of dogs that protect our men. Oh my goodness. That's so, 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 so out of COVID came actually mountain dog. That's yeah. amazing. Yes. Yeah. So, um, my wife, so my wife has been on this health kick for, she's always trying to make me healthier and I'm trying to be less healthy. So it's a good balance. <laughs> um, and so out of, out of this, um, we, she had bought one of these freeze dryers and she was making my backpacking meals because I'm an avid backpacker and hunt. I love to hunt fish, be in the woods. Um, and out of, out of all of that, we had this freeze dryer. Well, we were able to use that to create what we have today. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, um, we were presented with a problem because I couldn't fly anymore. And um, it started out as, well, we can make some extra money doing this to tide us over until I either go back to flying or go back to school or do something. But it just took off so fast that I was, I just was, uh, uh, yes, sorry. Um, yeah, it, it just took off so fast that we were able to uh, build it into a business. I love that. And yeah. you ran with it. Take oh, take yeah. the adventure, buckle in, and let's go. I love it. Mm. Yeah, and, and and actually also taking that uh, obstacle and just making it into an opportunity. I was just thinking, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, let's see what. Um, 
Gosh, what else can you share about your story that, um, so, um, cause it, I feel like there's a, there's something missing, like all of a sudden, you know, this thing with the dog, you know, you know, how did that come about? Like you know, the, okay, the dogs uh, and the fish and the other than adventure, like that's pretty specific. Alaskan. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, being a rambunctious kid growing up, um, I, I tell people, I usually get asked like, what kind of dogs do you like? What breed do you like? What? And you know, I've got two German shepherds, but growing up, we just had your run of the mill dog, family dog. I mean, they were never purebred anything. They they were just the, the dog that showed up to the place and, and was on the adventure with myself and my brother as we tromped through our adventures in the woods or whatever we were doing. Um, so there's always been that love for dogs there. There's always been, um, there's always been that sense of adventure that's been in me. Um, and and so it was just a, when I when I went off to the military, I was just on I was just awestruck by what these dogs would do um, in bomb detection, in protecting us when they had to send them after the bad guys, when um, just everything that they did, it, they were amazing animals. Um, so it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't that far fetched for me to look to, uh, being a dog lover already being, lo looking to having something to join a, a, something I enjoy my dogs and something that would make them healthier. Um, so I, um, I was injured overseas, um, during my time in Iraq and, uh, came home and then used my GI bill to become a helicopter pilot. Um, and, went through that process, started flying, loved it, um, still had a dog. It stayed at my dad's house uh, when I was off doing my things. And uh, then I met my wife. Uh, I have the most amazing wife who, um, like I said, tolerates my shenanigans. Um, <laughs> and in right about that time, the BP oil spill happened. Um, and a lot of the helicopter pilots were losing their jobs. And so we took what looked like to be a very scary thing right after we first got married. Um, I couldn't find a job. We were having a hard time. And so we bought a pawn shop. Um, that goes back to the three business I had owned in the past. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I laugh because hands down, it was my favorite company to own. Uh, there's always things to research. People would bring things in and say, Hey, I want a loan on this, or I want to sell this to you. And you don't necessarily know what it is. You have to go research it. And you have to be reading constantly on obscure items. Um, my my wife hates playing Trivial Pursuit with me because I've read so much about so many obscure things <laughs> that things pop up, and she's like, "How do you know that?" <laughs> and I and so I, we we say that my head's full of useless information hmm. uh, that's only good in games. But um, <laughs> but we but like it was just so much fun learning uh, about that and then from there we owned a trucking company in north dakota during the oil boom we were uh, hauling scoria rock to build dr drill pads and we sold that and then i had a uh, outdoor life and survival um, company where we were teaching um, people how to survive in the wild when they've been stranded or hurt, injured or um, anything along those lines. During that time, we found um, in the uh, in the area we were in Idaho, there was a, and really nationwide at the time, there was a big push for uh, women who wanted to get involved in shooting, but there wasn't a good instructor base to teach women how to shoot because they, the way um, women approach shooting is very different. I mean, I'm a broad shouldered, big guy, and I do think my my body mechanics are different. Um, whereas my wife, who is a very small lady, couldn't manipulate and do the same things I could. So, uh, and she wanted to learn. And so we found a lady who was teaching and it just took off. And it was so fun to see new markets that people hadn't seen before, where these ladies are just phenomenal at hitting their targets and competing in target shooting and becoming more comfortable with uh with sh the shooting sports it, it was just it was just a lot of fun um from there um i went back to flying helicopters uh i flew in north dakota my north dakota south dakota montana oregon idaho 
and then up in Alaska. And um, my wife, by that time we had had our daughter. Um, I've got a beautiful girl named Amelia and um, she, uh, my wife looked at me and she said, we can't be traveling around like a bunch of gypsies. We got to <laughs> And so I said, okay. I said, um, well, you're a teacher and I'm a pilot. So let's go to Alaska. And she was not thrilled about that choice. <laughs> um, I wonder what she thought. <laughs> yeah, no, she, I think she had her eyes set a little bit closer to home in Idaho, um, or at least in the lower 48. And uh, I had my sights set on Alaska. So we sat and we talked about it and we, uh, we, we considered all the options. Uh, we have a faith background, so we, we prayed together and we, we considered it. And we really saw that that's where we thought we could build a life. And so we loaded up an old farm truck that I had bought from my uncle and, um, and it, it was, it, it had a dented door. It was a terrible truck. Uh, it's actually a really cool truck. I think it's a really cool truck. My wife didn't think it was as cool as I did, <laughs> but, um, it, it really reminds me, I call it the old farm truck. Cause it reminds me of every truck you run into on the farm. It's got dents and the paint's <laughs> not quite right. And yeah, it's perfect. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so we uh, we loaded up a uh, 12 by 12 trailer. I told my wife, I said, if it doesn't fit in the trailer, hon, it can't go. And she goes, well, what if I can fit it in the back of the truck? I said, OK, you can have the back of the truck, too. <laughs> oh, and so uh, like the Beverly Hillbilly Clampets, we had a trailer and a truck packed down with as much stuff as my wife could get on it. <laughs> and we drove to Alaska through Canada and uh, showed up, got jobs and started going from there. Um, and it was, it's just so much fun. I mean, they, this life, this world's so big, this life is too short. So like, we just want to embrace the opportunity that's in front of us. And um, the other day, a friend of mine asked me, um, he's like, Hey, Kevin, what, what are your hobbies? And I said, you know, you know, obviously I love to hunt and fish. I love to build companies. I, I like all that. But honestly, my hobby is hanging out with my family. Like I've got I, my son. My son was born up here in Alaska. Uh, mm -hmm. He's now seven, turning eight. And um, and he is just a he, he is just a ball of energy. He exploring on his adventures with the dogs in the backyard. Uh, very much the way I was at, when I was younger. Um, just full of adventure and curiosity. And it's so much fun to watch your kids grow up. I love this. Oh my gosh. Everything that you're saying, how anointed it, you're creating such a beautiful life. Your wife strapped in going with it. I love it. And you're oh. together with it. Like, I love that you dream together. You're building this together. I love that. Oh, she is the balance to my crazy. Um, I, you know, we, we, we laugh because I come up with these ideas and she's like, okay, but, <laughs> and, and so she balances me out in all of that. And when, um, I couldn't have built what I built today without having her right there saying, okay, this is good. This is not like we, we sit there and, and across the kitchen table and just start planning things out. Like how are we going to do this? It's a good idea, but in, and she is, she's far smarter than I am. And so I, I definitely rely on, on just her wisdom in, in how she approaches things. That's wonderful. Mm. Uh, yeah. Again, I, you just kind of casually roll through this. Oh, I built this business and sold it. I built this business and sold it. I, you know, that, <laughs> Like, uh, can you just briefly speak to the entrepreneur out there that's listening? Uh, maybe, you know, because not all, not all entrepreneurs out there are building to sell. Like they're not even, either they're not thinking about it or um, we just had another wonderful conversation with another entrepreneur who, um, I mean, it's very strategic when you want to sell. Like it's a whole different thing <laughs> to build a business to sell it. So there, there's a couple sectors I see in entrepreneurship. Um, there, there's the one that wants to start um, more of a boutique style business where they service their local community and they do it better than everybody else. 
And then you have the type of entrepreneur who wants to build something big and then run it and, and be the, the CEO on Forbes. Um, and then there's an entrepreneur like myself who I love building things. I love startups. I love to build things. And once I built it, I'm bored with it. And so, because it's done being built, like there's other things to do with it. They can always be built and grow, but it's not something that, that I find a whole lot of pleasure in. Um, and so it's not, a, it's not uncommon that once I've built something that I sell it. Um, I don't know if that'll be the case. Uh, as I've gotten a little bit older, um, I've looked at, okay, maybe it, it would be good to learn the other side of this and and continue to grow um i have two amazing partners um one uh is the company cfo and he has a background in banking and brings a lot to the table there uh the other is a retired marine gunnery sergeant who has a big logistical background who brings a lot there um, we have uh an employee who pretty much runs the entire shop her name's maggie and she is she's just amazing like every time i turn around i i anticipate a problem and she's she's already anticipated it with me right right along with me so it, it, it's it's neat when you bring a team together like that and that's what where i look at is okay well let's see where this can go this maybe we take this one a little bit further i i don't know we'll we'll see we've we've been approached before to ask if it would be something that we'd be willing to entertain uh purchase and uh all cards are on the table. All options are on the table. We're, we'll look at what's the best option for our team. What's the best option for our company? What's the best option for our families? I love it. And the dogs. No. I love that you're, you're creating these wonderful products for dogs and their owners. Oh my gosh. That's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. And <laughs> the other thing that you were asking about the entrepreneur experience, the one thing that I see that is sometimes a little lacking is is brand experience. When somebody picks up your brand, when somebody picks up your product, when they when when they hear about your service, what is the immediate thought they go to? Um, for us, it is uh, a common theme for us is adventure. So when we when we're going through things, so here's one of our bags, mm. and so it's nice. very much tied to the Alaska wilderness with the uh, um, Northern lights in the background, a dog in the snow, the mountains, the um, here's, here's another one with the Northern lights. Um, mm. uh, uh, yeah. Here's our, here's one um, again, common theme, mountain dogs, uh, just having fun being out in the woods. Um, I tell people when, when somebody sees my bag on the shelf, when somebody picks up my bag, um, they're going to pick up my bag because whether they are an avid hiker, hunter, whatever, they, they could just be someone who enjoys watching adventure documentaries or documentaries on the woods. Uh, but when they pick up the bag and they're feeding it to their dog, they get transported to this to the Prince William Sound on the banks of, of the bay, catching salmon. Like it's that it's that a it's that emotional connection to the brand experience the brand experience is wild it is adventurous it is um speaking to to somebody who enjoys the greater outdoors however they enjoy it oh, that's beautiful mm -hmm. I yeah love i love that. that yeah you know i i, I was thinking if you're an entrepreneur and you're watching this show and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to, to 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 build a business or increase my business or whatever. What would be your advice? So, number one, you know, is is there a market for it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can have all the passion in the world if nobody else wants it. You, <laughs> I mean, you have to go create that passion, and that's really hard. Um, so, is there a market for it? Um, and then number two, once you have a market for it, what is your vision and your mission for that market? And it's not just a, you know, let's throw something out there. It's, it's what, what do I want to see? Where do I want to see myself at the end of the year, at two years, three years, and then five years and, and be ready for that to change mm. because markets change. Mm. Even today, markets change so fast. Um, but our vision drives our overall theme. 
And so our overall theme is, is enjoying the great outdoors and, and enjoying all the things that, that we all have a passion for with our dogs. Um, so in, in, by doing it that way, by driving our passion home that way, we created the best product out there. So the third part is, is after your after you've created your vision and your mission, go do one thing better than anybody else. Mm, that's good. So many times yeah. with entrepreneurs, because we are the epitome of chasing the shiny object of, of all of these things is, mm. is learn to discipline your mind to do one thing better than everybody else. We don't make liver treats. We don't make chicken treats. We don't make anything else. We do salmon treats and we do it better than anybody else in the world. I and, love that. And so yeah. when you can do one thing better than anybody else, then you can expand. Mm. wisdom gold oh thank you yeah Kevin. this is so good and uh, and you really made a great job of sort of creating the vision about uh adventure and everything on the packages i love that mm. thank you well we actually and i don't think anybody else has seen these yet so you guys get the first preview of them oh cool um, wonderful we have uh we have a new fish coming out. Oh. Um, I love the cute little shapes. Like, I bet oh, you yeah. that alone yeah. is a big sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's unique. It's, yeah. It's so cute. So mm -hmm. this is going to be the dog slash cat treat. Ooh. Oh. And so if you look at the size difference. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. a little bit smaller a little bit more manageable and mm -hmm. um and yeah it, so that is that is the newest product coming out it should be out here in the next six weeks um we're going to be doing some marketing events around it so keep track of our uh, socials and everything else um but um yeah i think that um i i, I it's it's just so much fun to create um and and again when people ask, uh, back to our prior, prior conversation, okay, so we made this fish and we knew how to do it really well. So then we said, well, how do we expand our market? Well, we're really good at this product. We're really good. So what if we did something for cats that was a little bit smaller? Okay, same theme, same product. Mm -hmm. We can stay in that same river swimming upstream, but we can expand our market that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in, in anytime you have business partners, anytime you'll find yourself at competing visions at times and, and being able to sit down together and saying, okay, we have a competing vision here. How do we get back on the same vision? How do we drive this towards the best possible outcome for the company? And so that is, that is hugely important when you're an entrepreneur is, is being able to address partners and, and it's really conflict resolution. Not that there's like, terrible conflict but anytime that there's a convergence in vision you have to sit down and, and be able to come together and drive the company in a single direction mm, brilliant yeah. well said oh my goodness mm -hmm. i love it oh my gosh so many cool nuggets in this in this interview um as we wrap this up kevin is there any other last thoughts that you want to share with the world in this interview you know it, the most important thing I would say about being an entrepreneur is having your priorities. Um, come up with three priorities that, uh, that are solid to you that are foundational. Uh, one of mine is my family. Um, so many times as entrepreneurs, we get so buried into um, what we're creating and the joy of creating that we forget the people who brought us. And um, so the, uh, the the encouragement I could have the most is is uh, family first and um, and then build your company because all all mm -hmm. this I mean all this behind me what we've built here it's fun it's a lot of fun but it's not as fun as hanging out and shooting bows with my son or doing mm -hmm. art projects with my daughter or having a date night with my wife um, make sure your priorities are right. 
beautifully said. Ah, oh, I love this. Oh, Hi, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today on Momentum Makers Podcast. So much gold in this episode. Any last thoughts for you, Gidi? Well, I was just going to ask if people are, are listening out there and they want to perhaps taste these sweets or give them to the dog, where do they go? What's next step, Kevin? So you can get on our website at uh, akmountaindog.com. It's AK as Alaska. It's abbreviation for Alaska. So mm -hmm. akmountaindog.com. And you can try one, um, the seven bag treat. Most people will buy the seven bag treat as a try one, but they, it's, I think it's close to 60% come back for a subscription for the 30 bag treat. Um, keep an eye out. We have some cat slash dog treats coming out that we think will do really well. Uh, we also have a topper. Um, if you just want to sprinkle a little bit of salmon on top of your, uh, dog's bowl or cat's bowl. Um, our cat loves it. We have a cat named Charlie who thinks he's a dog. Uh, <laughs> and so you can hit us up on all of our socials. It's really easy. All the socials are at AK Mountain Dog. So um, like, subscribe. Uh, our YouTube is at akmountaindog.com or at akmountaindog. So all of those, just let us know and send us a message. Uh, Maggie loves getting emails. And she loves answering questions and sending out people samples and all sorts of stuff. If you're a business and you'd like to carry our product, we do have a sample pack that we put together. We send them to you. We, we're we very generous in the fact that we will send you a ton of samples. We want your your you to experience them. We want your customers to experience them. We love sending out samples. Hmm. Ah, that's amazing. good to know, business owners out there. If you have a pet store of any yeah. kind, yeah, take them up on that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great offer. Okay, so so you go to at akmountaindog.com. Yeah, and I tell you what, we have, I'm looking to see if we have that code. Yeah, so I'll tell you what, if any of your listeners want to order anything in the promo code, if they put podcast 10, they will get 10% off wow. of their first order mm. promo code podcast the number 10 yep the number podcast 10 love it yep so let them know and, and let us know that where you let us know that you came here so we know that uh that these two awesome ladies drove business to us and had this great interview thank yeah, you so it's much been kevin a oh my God. yeah, yeah. I love this. Ah, go ahead, Didi. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna, gonna say thank you so much for this gift to our audience. We truly appreciate, it. and we truly appre appreciate having you here, Kevin. It's been such a pleasure, and you've been sharing so much gold. And I hope our, our audience they've been taking notes because <laughs> I've definitely been taking notes. So thank you once again, Kevin. It's been a pleasure. I'm Kate Atka. And I'm awesome, Angie Ingstrom. Thank you all for listening. Keep your momentum, keep moving forward. And if you want to learn more about what Gidi and I do with virtual stages, um, with Elite Virtual Stages is our company. And you can find us on Facebook and the web at elitevirtualstages.com forward slash report and learn how you might be able to scale your business using a virtual event. So once again, Kevin, oh my gosh, so much gold. I, you know, I, I love um, like new connection. Like we had never met before this moment. So thank you for being here and uh, the wisdom. I love the life you're creating, the businesses. I just, I still love it. Like, oh, I created this business. Like everyone's got their sweet spot and it's like, oh, I create this business and sold it. And I just love that. So um, thank you for, for the work you're doing in the world. Um, with the dogs and, you know, business with the business owners and connecting everybody together with, with, with quality. That's what I love. It's mm -hmm. high quality. It's unique. Um, the gold you imparted on everyone today on, on the entrepreneur side. Thank you. Um, so again, once again, everyone keep your momentum. Thanks again, Kevin. Have a fantastic rest of your so day. Much.